And hence, there is absolutely nothing new in the budget for the indigenous people of Guyana. I, like my ind indigenous brothers and sisters of this country, expected that the 2016 national budget would have had innovative ideas which could have represented the coalition's 2015 campaign slogan of change. But it's the worst, Mr. Speaker. Instead of change, it's a shame. Mr. Speaker, the sum of billions that was allocated for the hinterland development is a demonstrative of a complete absence, lack of vision and fresh ideas from the indigenous leadership of this coalition government. Hinterland infrastructure upgrades as it relates. School uniform, hinterland scholarship programs form part of this national budget, as was same under the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration. Where is the fresh approach? Nothing new. Absolutely nothing new. Mr. Speaker, as it relates to the school uniform distribution program, can the indigenous leadership of this coalition government say why Region 9 school children received school uniforms in late December 2015 in North Rupununi, and why other sub-districts received in late January 2016? Mr. Speaker, when the PPPC handled the school uniform program, absolutely every school child in the public school system received school uniform at the end of the school academic year, so that given the fact that the child had ample time to prepare for the new school academic year and hence attire in a new school uniform. In comparison, Mr. Speaker, this clearly indicates the competency of the PPPC when we talk about development, we talk the talk and walk the walk. Oh, yes. but, Minister, but Mr. Speaker, under the indigenous leadership of this coalition government, it is an opposite. Yes. Some schools in my region ended, ended up receiving wrong school uniforms, materials. Oh. I do hope this had been rectified in South Central Rupununi. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs boasts a complement of two ministers, added to that a vice president and three advisors. And imagine, Mr. Speaker, the time and the execution of the distribution of the school uniform. Mr. Speaker, is this competency? No. Mr. Speaker, I call on the indigenous leadership of the coalition government to say how many of the 1,972 youths that once served as community support officers are now involved in the HEYS program. How many land titles will be issued this year? How many? How soon, Mr. Speaker, Sawariwo, Katunarib, and even Tassarini? will receive land titles. How very soon? The Honorable Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs in her budget presentation to this House in 2015 alluded the main objective of the Indigenous Peoples Affairs is to enhance the lives of the Indigenous people all across Guyana. Can the Honorable Minister say how many indigenous youth's lives were enhanced during the nine months? How many, Mr. Speaker, be reminded, honorable indigenous minister, indigenous people's lives were already enhanced by the PPPC administration when in office. The PPPC had already set the developmental strides policies and innovative ideas for Guyana's first people. That is true. No stimulate growth, no restore of confidence, and hence 
no life, no good life beckons. Mr. Speaker, it now seems the coalition government is awakened from its slumber and restore the upgrading of hinterland airstrips after cutting it while in opposition and you are talking about restoring confidence. Apologize to the hinterland people for what you have committed. The women in business program that was brought to let them. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? The AP and UAFC activists mobilized all its women members to enroll for the program. Not a single PPP nor TUF woman was enrolled. What are you saying? Your government is for all? Not in this case. It is one-sided. Mr. Speaker, I call on the Minister of Public Security to pay much attention to public security in Region 9. Since this is a border region, one can imagine the activities. We can all talk about security strategies, but without the requisite resources and manpower, Mr. Speaker, where are we heading? To date, the Latin police station operates and functions with one next to all ATV and five looking malnourished horses. Well, region 9 being the largest geographic region, and this is what the police force in Latin has. The Latin police station is far from technology, Mr. Speaker. No fax machine, no computer. Imagine far from technology, not even a typewriter. Security is everyone's business. Come on, coalition government, do better and strengthen the Guyana police force. Why I am alluding to this is because the box stops at you. Do better for our police stations across this country. Mr. Speaker, Rupununians are disappointed as I do today that the Rupununi region in particular, the new town of Letem, did not receive substantial budgetary allocation to fix our fragile and vulnerable infrastructures. Letem was branded a municipality without the consensus of the people Mr. Speaker, why is this government making decisions at the top and the people have to swallow? It is time. Do not stifle democracy. Let them to Linden Road has received a hefty budgetary allocation, which will soon transform once again into poor maintenance and substandard upgrading. Minister, Mr. Speaker, I must commend Government Minister of Cohesion for executing an excellent job on behalf of a donor who donated a number of pairs of shoes and string strap bags to this government to school for school children in Region 9. I would like to recommend, however, Mr. Speaker, that the shoes that grow be, be distributed on a weekly basis, given the fact of the tearing of the Rupununi region. Where are we heading, Mr. Speaker, with the shoes that grow? It will definitely grow out, and our school children in the public school deserve better, Mr. Speaker, restore the Because We Care cash grant. Mr. Speaker, when the 300 million budgetary allocation for the Golden Jubilee was announced, thousands of Guyanese breathed a sigh of discomfort. Taxpayers' money for a Jubilee? When hundreds of Guyanese living under the breadline? Men, women, children, and even the young people living on the streets. And this government celebrate. Very soon, Mr. Speaker, the Guyanese people will start singing the lyrics of the popular Calypso, I don't want to be born. Not surprised, it's nine months now. They have already started singing the Calypso tune, King Liar. Yes. Go out there among the masses and you'll hear for yourself. Lie, you hear lie. I know you won't go. I know you won't go. The GOGs won't go. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the word Mashimani seems to lose its identity with the replacement of a golden jubilee. Even our 
national flag seems to lose the true identical colors with the color of green and yellow paint in everywhere, even on government buildings, school buses, and I can go on and on and on, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would not be surprised the, hum the human Humanayana will also be painted in yellow and green. Where are we heading? Where are we heading, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, green and yellow are the colors of our flag. I remember you will listen to me and then you will, you will continue. The green and yellow are the colors of the flag of Guyana. It cannot be an object for lampooning. It cannot be an object for lampooning in... I remember it is usual that when the speaker is speaking, members listen. It cannot be an object for lampooning in this house. I'm sure members can disport themselves in a better fashion than seems to be the instance now. Please proceed, Honorable Member. Thank you. <coughs> the colors of our flag are many colors. The issue being raised here by the Honorable Member Honorable is Honorable. that we cannot select only some colors of our flag, sir. And therefore, the member is speaking. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, other sectors in the budget presentation focus on building on the PPP civic administration policies, such as investing in information and communication technology and sewing machines for the hinterland communities, as well as alleviating transportation costs for the hinterland residents. Mr. Speaker, the last point contradicts a new rule that was made by the Regional Executive Officer of Region 9 to stop the supply of fuel to transport school children and patients. Added to that, Mr. Speaker, the same Regional Executive Officer has now limited the supply of fuel for the Regional Chairman of Region 9 to supply only five gallons per week and no issue of fuel for the Regional Vice Chairman. As my colleague, the Honorable Mustafa alluded, that the REOs totally disrespect the RDCs. This is a fact, Mr. Speaker. Region 9 REO is an example. Firing, hiring, victimization, marginalization. Is this beckons a good life? I'll remember you're raising on a point of order. Please. Yes, sir. When um, at the beginning of our debate, you made reference yesterday about impugning characters, government officials that are not here to defend themselves. And you asked uh, you ask the members to desist from that practice, sir. Honourable members, 
we can at least be courteous, however strongly we feel about a member's viewpoint. A member has risen on a point of order. We should accord in that courtesy. I should. I believe that what we have what we have managed to do is to give a new interpretation of the standing order that directs how members not speaking should conduct themselves during a debate when another member is on the floor. It is, it is, it is probably the only standing order that members have demonstrated a very serious unfamiliarity with. Honorable members mean honorable members. It means everyone in this house. And so perhaps we might want to look at that standing order and acquaint ourselves with it and feel ourselves to be guided by it. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. I was just re um, reminding this house, sir, when you started with, just before we commenced this debate today, you made mention of the fact that we should not be um, subscribing, subscribing any sort of motives to officials that who are not here to defend themselves. So just reminding, the, sir, and, and, and you made mention to that from the honorable member from Region 2 during his presentation. Uh, any, any more, sir, sir, I would just like to, um, and I'm not instructing you, Speaker, sir, I'm just, I'm just recalling your instructions, sir. It's not, it's not a point of order, but I thank the Honorable Member. Honorable Member Charlie, would you please continue? Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. Mm. Mr. Speaker, I call on this coalition government to be awakened and have farmers and the indigenous people to be exempted from the proposed increase in gun license fee. Mr. Speaker, the livelihood of the farmers and the indigenous people greatly depend on the possession of the firearm. Do you think the proposed amendment to the Tax Act will stimulate growth, restore confidence, hence a good life? No. Mr. Speaker, I call remaining. Mr. Speaker, can I rise to ask that the member be given his full 20 minutes and therefore the five minutes extension? Honorable member, you will speak for a total of 20 minutes. That is five minutes in addition to the 15 minutes which, to which you are allocated. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I call on the government to positively refuse, re reduce the fuel and electricity prices to reflect the true tumble in oil prices on the global world market. A 5% rebate in electricity charges is absolutely a Guyanese joke. Yes. And why it is effected until April 1, 2016, besides All Fool's Day? <laughs> why the Guyanese people have to wait Two months, Mr. Speaker, the announcement made by the Honorable Minister of Finance has absolutely nothing to do with the 2016 national budget. What the government will be doing is taking money from the ordinary Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, I, like my colleagues on this side of the House, call on this government to withdraw the ban on the importation of used tires, justifying the move as an effort to boost road safety is completely, is not completely factual, since most of the accidents on our roadways caused by drunk driving and speeding. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, it would be definitely comfortable if the government withdraw the move to introduce a broad-based environmental tax, which will definitely place greater burdens on a great number of the Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, the government has poorly justified to some of the draconian measures as a move to green the local economy, in addition to raising additional taxes. Mr. Speaker, 
We and the PPPC has always sought to balance the green economy and the low carbon development strategy with the need to improve the people's lives and not bring additional burdens of them as of us today. Mr. Speaker, a government is about caring, it's about creating the environment for all of its citizens to do positively well. But the philosophy of this present government seems totally and absolutely different. Rather than focus on the real productive sector, we in the PPP saw no help for rice, sugar, bauxite, mining, forestry, and fishing. Given that these are the real sectors that create wealth, what the entire Guyanese people saw is filling the coffers of the government on the backs of ordinary Guyanese citizens. Mr. Speaker, Guyanese will be undeniably hard hit by these measures. What this present, present government is doing is essentially taken away from the Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, in closing, a closer analysis of the Honorable Minister of Finance 2060 National Budget presentation revealed that while it is big on rhetoric, it is small on the much needed stimuli, policy, uh, policy outlook, and socio-economic framework required to rebuild, reorganize, and modernize Guyana. Mr. Speaker, I thank you.